Dan Kyle here at Uprising. Uh, this is Uprising TV, and I'm here with Tribe of Ghosts. Hello. Hello. So you guys played the night before Uprising. How was your gig? We did really, really, really well. Um, we played the Firebug before um, last year, just yeah. before we played Bloodstock as yeah. a warm-up show. And um, it was quite quiet at night, but we had really, really good response from everyone there. Yeah. Um, so it was really nice to come back and to the Firebug and play to a, a Audience that was packed yeah. and just really, really fun, amazing bands. Of course, we support Party Cannon, yeah. who were just ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> how, how was that kind of like experience? I mean, obviously, your 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 guys' music and Party Cannon's music completely would not normally see you guys on the same mm. bill. Mm. Uh, kind of, how did that did that match? <laughs> I think if people who are into Party Cannon are into sort of some sort of the ridiculousness that we kind of obtain in a different way. Yeah. Um, but I think also a lot of the fans there, because we also have sort of like um, doom bands and yeah, things. Yeah. It was a real mix of metal last night anyway. So yeah. I think everyone that came um, were open to yeah. various genres and people who kind of push boundaries and stuff. So it yeah. was nice to... Um, also, to we tend to like win over some of those fa um, fans as well. We've had yeah. a lot of people who are into doom, not sure about us, and yeah, they listen yeah. to us and they go... I think I'm converted. I think I like it. So it's nice to. Yeah. So yeah, had really, really good response, and I think we, we sold a lot of merch, which was exciting. Yeah, that, was, that, was, that was really good. Yeah, it was really nice, and and yeah, and Yarwood looked after us as always. Yeah. Like his Yarwood was was an absolute. He's an absolute saint. Yeah, it's a beautiful shirts as well. Most fabulous shirts. <laughs> the, the one thing I've always man, always wanted to ask is, why is there so much talent in Brighton? <laughs> uh, I don't want to say it's in the water because uh, <laughs> apparently the water is being filled with sewage right now. That, that um, might be it. <laughs> I, I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, You'd say you don't drink cancer. I don't know. <laughs> I think I think in Brighton, the Brighton scene's incredible. That it's, but I, I think the the thing with the Brighton scene is that it's it's so diverse to the point where there's it's it's such a melting pot of of incredibly mental bands yeah. like uh, d Our Birds and All Hell Dog who came with us last year there's Vayment who uh, mm. a black metal, black metal band they're incredible yeah. uh, there are just so many mental bands around Brighton um, I don't know I think maybe it's yeah, because I think it's because there's a melting pot of so many different genres in Brighton yeah. um, and people being open. There's such an openness in Brighton where everyone's willing to, you know, there's not too much gatekeeping or being like, I only like this genre and yeah. that's it. Like everyone's really willing to go to various different types of gigs and things. I think from accessing that music and various styles and yeah. then incorporating it together. And that's kind of what has made us the yeah. band that we are is us being willing to have no boundaries in the style that we do. Yeah. And also to be able to pick things from other genres that, just do really well. There's a big sort of underground punk scene in Brighton. Yeah. That's really, really cool and really sort of raw. Yeah. And you get some really wild shows if you go to them. And I yeah, think that yeah, kind yeah. of comes into effect with the metal. So yeah. it's like, ah, look at what, how much energy these bands bring. Yeah. Um, let's bring that to our shows. And then that, I think that kind of helps to really um, level up the bands in yeah. terms of the quality of what they're doing. Brilliant. I mean, to be honest, I've only ever been to Brighton once, which was for Mammoth Fest, actually. Mm. Um, and to be honest, for me, I think it's just such a beautiful city. You know, like, and, and oh, there's, yeah, there's a lot of inspiration there, you know. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. But, I mean, like, let, let, let's kind of talk Tribe of Ghosts. I mean, like, you, you kind of, you still are kind of in your infancy. I mean, like, you, you guys have achieved a lot in, in your time. Uh, but, I mean, like, uh, how did Tribe of Ghosts form? Um, it's a, so, it's a convoluted and weird story. And I think the best way to make it is, the, we kind of see last year as our year zero. Yeah. So about December 21? Yeah. 21? Uh, Tribe had hit a point where it was, we keep doing what we were doing and keep doing something that we, we were loving and enjoying, but it, I, I think maybe it wasn't, it wasn't exactly the thing that we were hearing in our heads. Mm. And uh, our role guitarist left, and this is where this kind of came in. It was either let's, you know, we, we were talking with each other, going, oh, you know, what, what do we want to do with it? Where do we want to take this? And there was never really any kind of solid... There's never really a solid sense of what we wanted to do with it. And then when we rebooted, and when Rob, when our old guitarist left, like, incredible guitarist, uh, but, who, yeah, it was just kind of, I want to go be a dad. Yeah. Um, for us, in in that 2021 December, we were just looking at each other and went, right, so either we can try and find another guitarist, or we can just... 
go hell for leather and do whatever the fuck we want. Yeah. And that, but all of us just looked at each other and went, let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> um, so yeah, what, what started off with, what started off as us kind of going, can we start adding incense? Can we start doing some more industrial stuff? Ended up with us going, uh, with Bradley leaving me a voice note going, I want a sexy song. <laughs> and he's like, right, cool. I'll get right in. And um, yeah, it's, it's kind of birthed for us that, that point when we, when we came together and mm. Bradley, Danny, Ben and I, um, I keep saying, by the way, uh, he's always I my keep nickname. Running, sorry. My nickname is Bradley, yeah. and um, which comes from a very other convoluted story. Yeah. Um, and Adam Sprain loves just to switch to I, constantly I, I, to Bradley, so people think I'm Bradley, but my name is Becky, by the way. Sorry, <laughs> Becky. Um, so when we're all kind of doing, when all four of us were coming together and just pushing stuff and pushing how far we want to write things, mm. yeah, it just kind of birthed this, and there's not really a we've not really decided that there's going to be a limit on what we do. There's mm. uh, everything we want to do is just, do we want to do it? Yeah. Just give it a go. Yeah. And I think there's, you know, definitely something to applaud you for that Becky as well. Cause Becky's kind of with, with Becky's background being more pop centric as well. It's kind yeah. of like, why do we need to do this? Like, mm. could, let's just do whatever we want. And let's go, Oh, that's something we can do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have no understanding of the gatekeeping um, of subgenres in metal, and I don't care for it either. So I'm just like, let's just smush it together. Like, why? If it makes sense to us, like, yeah, yeah. it doesn't really matter about keeping genres separate or anything like that. So that's let's cool. Just, like, blend it all in. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's one of those things. I mean, you know, I kind of chat to Comic Cross, yeah, and they have the same sort of thing. Just like, whatever happens, happens. You know, um, nice one. So let's let's talk. Obviously, your latest singles. Uh, your latest one being some. Mm -hmm. um, kind of how has the fan perception been and kind of what's the reaction been that you've had? It's been really fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, um, I was literally just outside. Get, this is probably, this song's probably the, the epitome of kind of yeah. how far we can kind of take things in terms of blending styles and taking yeah. and crossing boundaries and stuff. So we've literally got like a pop chorus that then goes into this death core yeah. outro that's just obnoxious. <laughs> so, and, and um, we literally, when we, uh, we and Adam were sort of writing the vocals for the end part, and, yeah. um, and I mean, originally with that section, um, we weren't sure what to do with it. Adam had originally written this like cool industrial sound in Middle Lake, which we definitely want to use for something else, which didn't feel right for the song. Yeah. And it was like, well, it's getting, turning into just a very basic pop structure. What can we do with it? Yeah. And I just went, let's black tongue it. <laughs> and um, then it just went relentless. And by the point where we were writing the outro, we were all just laughing to ourselves because it was just so ridiculous. Oh, it so um, but um, it, with that, it was also like, how are people going to like this? This is the crazy, kind of the, the most boundary pushing thing yeah. we've put out. And uh, we weren't sure how well received it was going to be, but people have been so welcoming and so, yeah. um, so complimentary about it. And uh, it's been really exciting to see the response. Nice song. So what, what's kind of next then? Are you, are you working towards a full length or an EP or something like that? So we've got plans. We've yeah. got some plans that are underway. Uh, there is, trying to say, that, I'm trying to work out how to say it while still being able to say things but not secret. able to. Yeah, secret. Yeah. Um, we do have a full body of work written that yeah. we're hoping to release. Uh, we haven't got an exact date for yeah. when that will be. It will likely be early next year, but we're hoping to drop some stuff this year cool. as well before it comes out. Awesome. Well, let, let, let's talk this year. So, I mean, like, yeah. uh, obviously, we've, we've got Bloodstock coming up, opening the sofa stage. Yeah. Um, kind of, uh, what's what else have you got going on? And, and tell us kind of about your, your year, what happens from here. So, from here, so along with Bloodstock, we're also doing Rabid Fest in yeah. November. Yeah. Um, really excited for that. We're also playing an all day festival in Reading. The main focus for us is doing getting out there. Um, yeah. A lot of what people connect with with us is our live shows, and yeah. that's what tends to win people over. So the main thing is to try and book as many live shows, go to places we haven't been before, yeah. and just to connect with people, and yeah. um, then to hopefully then get excited for what we want to release later in the year, really, is the main plan. Yeah. Um, we're under management now. Um, yeah. We recently announced that we're with Dark Mother Management, yeah. um, so who also looks after Forlorn yeah. and um, Fake Your Death, amongst others as well. Yeah. Um, so we're super excited for what we can create together. Mm -hmm. and. Um, so a lot of it is just getting out there, meeting people, and then seeing what else we can pull out the bag and surprise yeah. people with, really. Brilliant. So um, kind of like from 
from today? Obviously here at Orb Rising, uh, yeah. are there any bands that you're really looking forward to, to checking out? So I'm well excited for Paradise Lost because I love that bunch. They yeah. are amazing. Uh, I am really looking forward to looking forward to Pretty Addicted. Mm -hmm. That's going to be really, really fun. Caught Blood Oath, they're wicked. Record the Remains, gonna go see Record the Remains. Yeah, um, really old friend of ours, love those bunch. Um, who are you planning? What are you thinking? I think all those. I'm also very excited to see our drummer's drum kit on stage for Paradise Lost. Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they had their very specific um, criteria for the type of drum kit they wanted, and fortunately, yeah. Being on tour, we're, we've got the drum kit with us, and they'll kind of ask, uh, "Could we please use it?" So, yeah. yep, it's going to be on that stage. Well, what are you going to get for that? Are you going to sort of ask them for? Oh, there's, there's, there's been, some, there's been some stuff that we've been talking about. So that's quite fun. Fair fun. There we go. It's, I think what's the, the, the thing, the thing that for us is, is the best was that uh, you pat my back, I'll pat yours. Yeah, well, basically. <laughs> so the thing for, I think the thing that we're finding the best is so we played last night last night was amazing um nothing broke which for us is a rarity um i say nothing none of my gear broke which is a rarity um because i throw it at people um trust me our live shows are stupid <laughs> they're really like they are it's pure and adulterated chaos um but yeah so simon uh simon yarwood helps us out with uh having a day today, so we're having a little bit of a family day, and yeah. we've just kind of infected ourselves into the entirety of today. <laughs> so just instead of being like, oh yeah, no, we're just kind of hanging out, we're just like, yeah, no, we're gonna come out. Also, we're just gonna, here's our drum kit. A, are we, can we use the interviews? And, we'll do the, and let's do, hello. <laughs> so we're just kind of just, now we're here. <laughs> so so what, it's, it's a chaotic day, but at least, oh, at least you're having fun. Oh yeah, but, absolutely. It's, I, think this, I think this is just even talking more about our <laughs> unadulterated <laughs> level of chaos. Yes. That is just Tribe of Ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> well, th th thank you very much for your time uh, and uh, chatting you. with us today. And uh, check out Tribe of Ghosts.